In this video, we'll see the interrupts available in PIC 16F877. So as we know that PIC 16F877 family has up to 14 interrupt sources. So these 14 interrupt sources can interrupt CPU at any time and we can execute the interrupt service routine related to that particular interrupt. So the interrupt control register that is INTCON register records the individual interrupt requests in flag bits. So all these 14 interrupts have a different a flag bit available in different registers basic interrupts that is uh, interrupt on change feature or external interrupt or timer zero overflow interrupt so these flag bits of these interrupts are present in INTCON register uh, it also has individual global and interrupt enable bits so individual bits are used to enable or disable the individual interrupt whereas the global interrupt enable bit is used to enable or disable all the interrupts which are present in peak 16F877. So a global interrupt enable bit that is GIE bit is present in INTCON register. So whenever this bit is 0 it means that all the interrupts will be disabled and whenever this bit is 1 it means that all the interrupts are enabled and whenever any interrupt is generated that interrupt will interrupt the CPU and the ISR will be executed. So when this GIE bit is enabled and the interrupts flag bits and mask bits are set the interrupt will vector immediately. So for example if suppose we have enabled the interrupt for timer 0 overflow then uh, for that whenever the timer overflows the interrupt will be immediately generated if the global interrupt enable bit is made equal to 1 along with the individual interrupt enable bit of timer 0. Then individual interrupts can be enabled or disabled through their corresponding enable bits which are present in different registers. So for the basic interrupts that is port B interrupt on change, timer 0 and external interrupt the enable bits are present in INTCON register whereas for uh, other uh, interrupts the bits are present in different registers. So individual interrupt bits are set regardless of the status of GIE bit. Now suppose if this GIE bit is 0, it means that we have disabled all the interrupts and if suppose uh, let's say timer 0 overflows. So whenever the timer 0 overflows, the interrupt bit of that particular interrupt in this case timer will be automatically set even if this GIE bit is disabled. So whenever the controller is resetted at that time this GIE bit is 0. The return from interrupt instruction that is RETFIE exits the interrupt routine as well as it sets the GIE bit which re-enables the interrupts. So whenever any ISR is being executed at that time initially when the ISR starts to execute at that time GIE bit is 0 it means that other interrupts will not be able to interrupt the CPU and once the ISR is completely executed the final instruction present in ISR is RET FIE. So whenever this instruction is executed, the GIE bit is made equal to 1 and again the interrupts will be re-enabled. The RB0 INT pin, the port B interrupt on change and timer 0 overflow interrupt flags are present in INTCON register. The peripheral interrupt flags uh, for other interrupts are present in PIR1 and PIR2 registers. So 14 interrupt sources are there. Out of that, 3 interrupt sources are available in INTCON register the flags of those interrupts are available in INTCON register whereas the interrupt flags for the remaining peripherals are present in PIR1 and PIR2 registers. The corresponding interrupt enable bit of every peripheral is also available and uh, for the remaining peripherals the interrupt enable bits are available in PIE1 and PIE2 registers. Along with that Peripheral interrupt enable bit is also present in INTCON register. Whenever we want to generate an interrupt from any of these peripherals, at that time we have to make sure that the peripheral interrupt enable bit which is present in INTCON register is enabled. That is it should be having value equal to 1. Only then the peripherals will be able to interrupt the CPU. So whenever any interrupt occurs, at that time the GI bit is cleared to disable any further interrupts and the in return address is pushed onto the stack and the PC is loaded with 04 hex address. So this 04 address is the vector address of interrupts. So whenever any interrupt out of these 14 interrupts occurs at that time the program counter will jump to the address 04 hex. 
so this is the vector address for all the interrupts and the return address of the pro, uh, program counter is pushed onto the stack and at the same time gi bit is made equal to zero so that other interrupts will not be able to interrupt the cpu so once the program counter jumps to the address of zero uh, four hex at that time first of all we have to write a program which detects which interrupt has generated and which isr is to be executed so for that we have to pull the individual interrupt flags of different interrupts and the flag which is equal to one that interrupt is generated and we have to execute the isr related to that particular interrupt the interrupt flag bits must be cleared in software before re-enabling interrupts to avoid recursive interrupts so whenever an interrupt is generated at that time program counter will jump to the isr of that particular interrupt and uh, that isr will be completely executed so before exiting that isr we have to make sure that we have cleared the interrupt flag of that particular interrupt if we fail to do so then again the program counter will jump to the same isr and it will it will keep on executing the same isr again and again because it will think that this interrupt is again occurring so we have to clear the flag before leaving the isr individual interrupt flag bits are set regardless of the status of their corresponding mask bits pie bit or gi bit so suppose if both this pie bit and gi bit are equal to zero it means we have disabled the interrupts and along with that the individual interrupt bits are also zero means all the interrupts are disabled then even if a particular interrupt event occurs then also the interrupt flag of that particular interrupt will be made equal to one so for controlling these interrupts we have a sfr called as anticon sfr a format of that register is as shown so it is having eight bits again so msb bit is gi bit which is global interrupt enable bit so this bit controls whether the interrupts will be able to generate an interrupt to cpu or not so whenever this bit gi bit is zero it means that interrupts will be disabled and whenever this bit is one it means that interrupts will be able to interrupt the cpu next bit is pei bit so this is a peripheral interrupt enable bit so when the, this bit is one it means that the peripherals will be able to generate an interrupt and which will interrupt the cpu whereas if this bit is zero it means that the peripheral interrupts will not be able to interrupt the cpu so the peripheral interrupt consists of all the interrupts other than timer zero overflow interrupt external interrupt and port b interrupt on change feature so except these three interrupts all interrupts come under peripheral interrupt enable the next bit is t0 ie bit so this is a timer zero interrupt enable bit so whenever this bit is one it means that the overflow occurred on timer zero will be able to generate an interrupt and whenever this bit is zero it means that the overflow of timer zero will not generate an interrupt next bit is INTE so this is related to the external interrupt so if this bit is zero it means that external interrupt is disabled and it will not be able to generate an interrupt whereas if this bit is one it means that external interrupt is enabled and whenever external interrupt occurs it will be able to interrupt the CPU next bit is RBIE so this bit is for port B interrupt on change feature so whenever this bit is one and any bit on higher order bits of port b changes its state then it will be able to generate an interrupt and whereas this bit is zero then it will not be able to generate an interrupt so these three are the flag bits this is a timer zero overflow flag bit this is external interrupt flag bit and this is port b interrupt on change flag bit so these flag bits are used to indicate whether a particular interrupt has occurred or not so irrespective of the status of these all bits these bits will always set whenever that particular interrupt occurs so whenever we execute the isr related to all these interrupts at that time we have to clear the interrupt flags of individual interrupts whenever we leave the isr of that particular interrupt
so this is the interrupt structure available in peak 16f877 there are 14 different interrupt sources so here there are two inputs for these and gates one input is the interrupt flag bit and the other input is the interrupt enable bit of that particular interrupt so this is for uh, e square from read write then we have parallel slave port interrupt then we have adc interrupt then we have receive interrupts then transmit interrupt then synchronous serial port interrupt then we have capture compare pwm1 module interrupts then timer 2 interrupts then timer 1 interrupts then capture compare pwm2 interrupts and finally bus collision interrupts so all these interrupts can come under the peripheral interrupts so if we want to use these interrupts then we have to make this pei e bit equal to 1 only then we will be able to generate an interrupt from these peripherals Next, these three peripherals are timer 0, external interrupt and port B interrupt on change feature. So, these, these interrupts can generate an interrupt even if this PEIE bit is 0 because it is outside this PEIE loop. Then this GIE bit is used to enable or disable all the interrupts. If this bit is 0, the output of this AND gate will always be 0 and now uh, the signal here will not be able to interrupt the CPU whereas if this bit is 1 it means that whatever signal is available on these gates or available on these gates will pass through this AND gate towards the CPU and that signal will interrupt the CPU. So this is how the interrupts work in PIC16F877 microcontroller. So in the next video we will see the next peripheral called as timers. For more information you can log on to the website given in the description of this video. Thank you.